Hi everybody, it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. This week we're going to use some maple, mix a custom color, do some coring to make a really awesome bowl for Jenny. This week we're going to be uh, working with some gnarly looking maple. <laughs> This came from a friend of mine named Jenny, and this is a commission for her father. Uh, and what's special about this piece of wood is that it came off of um, his land. So, you know, uh, going through the drying process, it, it didn't fare out so well. <laughs> but um, as you can see, there was, a, there was a knot that goes all over, or I should say a branch that went all the way through it. Plenty of splits and cracks, got some dry rod in it. Um, but around all this stuff is this figurative green. So, you know, this makes this a good candidate for resin casting so we can save this piece. And what we're going to do is hopefully get two bowl, like a two bowl set out of this. But there are some issues. This was the, the original place where the drive center was and it's fine. I know it doesn't look all that great, but it's actually quite strong. I was just hammering on it. So I'm not too worried about this, but I am worried about this. This is the center right here, and it's very close to the um, where that branch was. So I'm a little worried about the live center pushing through this. So what I'm gonna do is flatten this off. We'll get a glue block on here, get it on the lathe, get this trimmed up, and the reason why I want to trim it up is because there is such uh, a large deviation in the very top of this that it's just kind of a waste to not flatten this off before we do any casting with it. So uh, that's what we're going to do with this piece. Hopefully you enjoy the video. The bottom of this piece wasn't too bad. I'm just using the cuts all sander just to try and flatten an area so that we can get that that glue block on there. Uh, this is the safest method that I can think of to do this. I just kind of temporarily glue this in place. I don't really actually hot melt glue it in place because I don't see the point of it. I didn't show it, but I just used a glue gun, put about three or four drops of glue on just to hold that, that block in place. That's not really the concern. It's being pinched between centers. So as long as it's um, got some good pressure on it, it's not going anywhere anyway. It probably wouldn't go anywhere even if it was uh, if it wasn't glued on there. So the goal is just to strip off all this anchor seal. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that, and I know that I've mentioned this in the past. The resin won't stick to the anchor seal. So if you don't pull that anchor seal off there, what can happen is that resin can come off in big chunks and hit you, and you definitely don't want that. Also, the anchor seal may be covering some cracks, so you want to expose those cracks to the resin so that it gets filled in by the resin during the casting process. I thought it was also important to flatten the very top of this, like I said earlier. <laughs> it actually doesn't work out in the end for us, but the I, I definitely wouldn't want to cast this piece without first flattening it, just to limit how much resin you're going to use. In the end, this piece didn't use the amount of resin that I thought it was going to use. So um, anyway, it's just if you didn't put enough resin in or you put too much in, you just you just can't win. <laughs> it's going to be one or the other. So, you know, I'll always err on the side of caution and put more resin in than I think I'm going to need. That way there's not an issue during casting. Just taking away any sharp edges because I'm going to use the double bag method and I'm going to use the rice method again, but it's going to be slightly different from what I've done in the past. And uh, I'm really happy with the way that this worked. And you'll certainly be seeing more of it in the future. Like I've done in the past, I first put in a bed of rice. Those are two kitchen bags. I always double those up in case there's a leak. And then I poured the rice all around the outside of this, giving it support all the way around. And you can do this on pieces where there's not big voids and this works actually very well there that is supported all the way around here and i'll throw Dwayne on top of this to hold it in place and you know <laughs> 
there shouldn't really be much wasting of resin. I'm going to make sure that there's a good reservoir on the top of this to draw from. But, you know, with that rice packed all the way around it, it shouldn't use a whole lot of resin. But we'll see. All right, let's mix up some resin. Since this is going to be a deep casting, we are using, in fact, deep casting epoxy from Designer Epoxy. I wanted to make a custom color. Now I was going for burgundy, so I'm going to use some pearl red and I'm just showing how much I'm putting in here. Uh, part of the reason why I do this is so that if I have to go back and replicate it, I can look at the video footage and make, mix it exactly the same. Wasn't needed here. But uh, first I mixed up the red, then some rainbow blue, and I was really going for a really deep burgundy color. Now, for some reason, this ends up turning more purple than burgundy, but that certainly wasn't my intention. So, you know, that's a, a maroon-ish. Uh, the more blue you put in, the more burgundy I find. Is that dark enough for us? Hmm. I think we need a little more blue. I think that maybe I should have stopped there, but you know, I'm not perfect at mixing colors. So in the end, I think it's still a beautiful color. All right, let's do the pour and see if this is enough. I'm gonna assume that it's not. It isn't really gonna be able to see all that great. This bucket's pretty deep. It actually looks pretty good. I don't know how deep it is. It's hard to tell. Well, I don't know. It's sitting at about three quarters of an inch on the top. I'm just a little worried that it's not going to be enough. I want the height of this to stay. Actually, what I'm going to do is throw this in the pressure pot for about a half hour. Then I'll look at it after that and add more if I need to. I'm not going to bother showing that. Anyway, we will see you in three days. <sighs> well, it has been actually 10 days. My wife and I just got back from Jamaica last night. So I uh, got away with friends and family. Had an awesome trip. Montico Bay, if you're curious where we were. Get Dwayne off here. So this resin should be um, fully hard. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. See if we had any leaks, because I don't know at this point. Looks good. Well, I'm a little surprised that this wood didn't eat up more of this resin. Still quite a bit of resin on the very top of this. I thought for sure that it was going to eat up more of it. But uh, regardless, we got a good solid casting. Uh, this here is not really that big of a deal. I might actually just clean this up and put a little bit of UV resin in there to, so we can carry on with the project. But you know, we got a good solid blank. And that was something that we didn't have prior to pouring the resin. So let's get, um, actually I think what I'm going to do first is get this cleaned up on the very bottom here. So <laughs> I've got the doors open to the workshop today. Uh, first time this year that I'm able to do that. And uh, so yeah, every now and then there's some road noise. But uh, all I want to do here is clean this up. I'll throw some UV resin in here and then uh, we'll be able to flatten the bottom. I think that what I will do is throw a glue block on the bottom of this uh, before we even get started. And then um, I was thinking, actually when I was down south I was thinking about this, that um, I'm going to core out this piece and what I'm going to do with the piece that I core out is actually make a nice box. That's the plan. All subject to change of course.
Just cleaning off the excess resin so that the glue block has good adhesion. I also decided to sand that little area where we're going to use the UV resin. And there it is right there from Desire Epoxy. That way, you know, we don't shouldn't have any delamination issues. I could have used different colors on the bottom, but I decided to use the two colors that we used in the original casting. And, um, but to change it up a little bit from the original pour. All right, so if you haven't been here before, uh, this UV resin is cured with a UV light, such as this. You can also get this at Desire Epoxy. Uh, I figured that it would be cool to use the colors that we use to make this, uh, this color. So, but I'm going to lay it in and kind of swirl it around and I'll probably drop about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch. And then I'll hit it with the UV light, cure it, and then maybe scratch that up a little bit and build it up until we get this filled into the top here. Anyway, I will cure this. I'll probably do it at, uh, I don't know, say four minute intervals. And then I'll bring you back when it's all uh, filled into the top. So if you're curious, uh, I did it in three pours. And now I'm just cleaning off, flattening the bottom so that we can get a glue block on there with uh, hot melt glue from my electric frying pan. There, we'll give that about 10 minutes to set up and then we'll get it on the lathe. Just to err on the side of caution, I decided to grind down that nub that's on the very top. That way uh, there shouldn't be any issues when we pinch this between centers. Wow, that ain't bad. All right, we'll get rid of all this excess resin that we see here. And then uh, we'll stand back and have a look at this, see what we're going to do. As far as the outside of this piece is concerned, I'm very happy with uh, how much resin was used. I know I didn't show it, but inside of the the piece of maple that we're working on here, it, where that branch was going through it, it actually looked quite punky in some spots. So I was quite surprised that it didn't use more resin than what it did so i mean that's why i put so much resin in there uh the one thing that really kind of i'm having a real difficult time with is getting those castings flat and level sitting in those buckets uh i guess maybe i could try and measure from the top of the casting to the top of the bucket to make sure that it's sitting relatively level but as you can see on this one it's probably out almost a half an inch I'll also uh, share this with you. Be careful with your UV resin when it's sitting in the cups. If your UV light happens to shine into it, it's going to cure it. Uh, in, in this case, one of the cups was just starting to skin over on the top. I managed to save the resin, but uh, it's something you really should watch out for. And also, if it happens to be sitting on your bench and say sunlight is beating in on your bench, well, it can also cure the uh, UV resin as well. So keep an eye out for that. So just clean up the tenon so that we can get this reversed and mounted in the chuck. Just cutting off that little nub. And the goal right now is to just trim off all this excess resin. You will see that I do switch to wearing a glove because I get actually right there, I get nailed with some resin. So, you know, I would sooner wear a glove than have resin embedded in my hand or my knuckles. So that's why I'm wearing the glove, if you're curious. As you watch me whittle this down, I will say that, you know, even though this resin is fully cured, I am getting ribbons off of it. 
and until you can get it flattened you're going to get lots of chip out but if you're getting chip out after things have been flattened you really need to look at your technique maybe you're being too aggressive pushing too hard once that resin gets trimmed down where it's a flat surface you should get nothing but shavings coming off of it also you know having a sharp cutter on the hercules that i'm using here is certainly a big thing too so if you're having issues make sure and you have a hercules buy a new cutter and put it on and i think you'll see a big big difference and the way the tool glides across the surface. I originally thought about and trying to incorporate the resin into the very top of the box, but because it was so uneven, I didn't think that it was going to look all that great. So that's why I decided to go ahead and trim it off. I do leave a tenon on the very top of this so that I can reverse the cord piece uh, afterwards when I make the box. But other than that, I, I figured that, you know, with the, this resin had to go because it just was so uneven. And it would have, I don't know, it was just really messing with me. And I made the decision that I had to get rid of it. All right, so it's time to do some coring. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use my tailstock. Tailstock's right here until I can get in, get in a little ways. So hopefully, nothing bad happens until I can get some tailstock support. But we'll see how it goes. Now I could have gotten possibly a larger core out of this. But I do plan on moving this outboard, so I knew that I was going to have to chew it up again. There, I'm seeing if I can get any tailstock support. Couldn't do it. Uh, you'll see right here, I was able to get this tailstock support in and a little extender from John Tully again. Thank you so much for that, John. Worked great. And um, the plan is to move this outboard so that I can finish it. So, you know, when I'm inboard doing these, doing this coring, I typically will leave the outside money bowl thick. Uh, that way there's lots of room for air when you move it outboard because you definitely will have to chew it up again once it goes outboard. So, you know, you take a sixteenth of an inch off or an eighth of an inch off and then all of a sudden your bowl is kind of on the thin side. So that's why the outside core is as large as it is or as thick as it is because I know there's probably going to be some people say that, you know, I could have got a bigger core and I could have. But you know, it's just not worth risking it because you can go through the side of your bowl pretty quick. There you go, the Core Pro Cutter does a beautiful job again. Uh, one of the best tools that I've ever worked with as far as coring is concerned. You get these at Hunter Tools. Don't forget to use my code in Legion. Great product. So here we are mounted outboard and in the end I think it was out maybe about a sixteenth of an inch or so. So there were some areas in this that I had to do some gluing and we'll see those coming up. So you know you cut, you, you initially trim it up so it's running true here. Then you put the CA glue on it to harden up those areas, fill in any fine little cracks, any punky areas. Then you trim that back. You're typically going to do that two or three times. So then all of a sudden your bowl is starting to get thin. And don't forget that you still have to sand this piece. You might be surprised at how much thickness you can take off of a bowl when sanding. So that's why you'll see me leave these the outside bowls typically as thick as I do. One thing to take note of, if you look at the position of the Hercules, it's at a 45 degree angle and I'm taking very, very light cuts. 
I will eventually show my hand where I've got the really fine shavings on it. But you know, at this stage, you just want to take some really fine cuts and let the Hercules do the work for you. Don't be too aggressive. And if you follow those rules, you won't have any issues and you'll actually have a very clean surface that may need little to no sanding. As far as the inside was concerned, everything was pretty routine. I'm just going to be quiet for a little while here, enjoy the video and the, the sounds of the lathe, and I'll talk to you here in a minute. One of the issues with using the one-way coring system is that, of course, the, the knives are at a specific profile. So if your outside bowl doesn't meet that profile, then you'll typically have a lot of material to, to remove in kind of the base of the bowl or the belly of the bowl is what I like to call it. Uh, always checking wall thickness. Uh, this way you're, you're ensured not to turn your bowl into a funnel because uh, nobody likes the funnel bowls. And so, you know, just take your time, shut the lathe off regularly, measure with your, your calipers to make sure that you're not going, you know, you're not getting too thin in some areas. And, you know, especially if you, if you know that you've got some more filling coming up, it's important to just get everything to a uniform thickness say to within a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch of your finish thickness and then you can do your filling and then just trim things up and then you should be good to go to sanding. I will also say that it was really nice to have my doors open in my workshop to get some airflow through them. Uh, you can see that's the, the large door uh, in behind the bowl and I've got a double door behind me that I can open up and get some cross ventilation. So that's really, it's really nice to have that, especially if you're doing a lot of sanding. Uh, the problem with being a northern turner like I am here in Canada that, you know, you can't have your doors open in the wintertime. And even with a three horsepower double bag dust collection system, I, when I was in full production at the end of the week, there would probably be you know, a sixteenth of an inch of dust on everything in the workshop. So it's nice to get a little bit of cross ventilation so that you don't have so much dust kicking around and get fresh air for a change. Uh, so anyway, we're getting there. Uh, we'll soon move on to filling here and um, we'll be able to get our first coat of finish on this thing, hopefully soon. Not the best camera work here. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd, I'd zoomed out, but apparently I didn't. But I'm using the thin CA glue from Starbond here. 
And there is a code in the description to get 15% off your next order. Just use code inlaygym at checkout. And I'm using the thin stuff. There was some punky areas in there and some really small, fine micro cracks. So that's what I'm doing with the thin stuff, if you're curious. Didn't use any of the thick stuff this week. I also needed to take it off so that I could put the CA glue in the very base of the bowl where the resin pocket is. So that's why I took it off the lathe. So again, another trimming. I think I did this three times before I was happy with the surface that was left behind. Uh, again, I don't, I don't know how you can be a wood turner and not use CA glue. Uh, there, it is very, very rare that I use a piece where it doesn't need some sort of stabilizing of cracks or some areas that were punky and need to be filled in. So the other thing too is you'll notice uh, the last two videos were actually quite long and my analytics are telling me that you know people aren't watching them. I know that there's a lot of um, a lot of people that do watch my videos that watch the whole thing and I do appreciate that. But you know my analytics are telling me that most people are sticking around for 20 minutes or they're fast forward through, through the whole thing and they're not watching it. So you know I'm going to change it up a little bit. Uh, I could have finished the box here with this video but I decided against it and I'm going to um, have that as a, as a bonus upload through the week. So I didn't show the second filling. This is actually the third filling of the Thin CA. And then after that, we'll be able to trim this up and get it sanded. And, you know, I, there's a lot of people that watch every minute of my videos, and I, I really do appreciate it. But, you know, uh, the length of these videos is taxing to to make and to edit and you know if you're if your viewers aren't really watching the whole thing then you know it tells me that i need to change things up a little bit don't worry the instructional videos aren't going anywhere i do like doing these voiceovers and i'm not going to change it up at all but the length of these videos is getting to be sometimes too much and even for me so i totally get it Finally, on to sanding. These are the three and a half inch dipple discs from sandpaper.ca, and this was sanded from 60 to 800. If you are having delamination of your sandpaper from the backing that goes onto your sanding pad, you're probably pushing too hard on the sandpaper. You shouldn't really be pushing at all. If you look at the sanding pad, there's hardly any deflection in it when I'm using it. So it shouldn't be getting real hot and if it is getting real hot then you're probably pushing too hard on the sandpaper causing the glue to melt and to delaminate from the uh, the backing so this is just triple e buffing compound from the be all buffing system then we'll clean this up with a little bit of denatured alcohol and get finally get our first coat of finish on this beautiful bowl all right, this is Waterlux Medium Sheen. Well, we were going for burgundy, and there's a hint of it in there, but it's mostly purple. <laughs> um, wild looking green there. And there. I used to really hate cracks. Now, not so much. <laughs> when they're filled with resin, they really look cool. Uh, this area right up here is pretty cool. Beautiful piece of wood, though. And the resin's pretty nice, too. Really dark though, I know it is. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow with the second coat. If you're new here, Waterlux responds well to buffing. So again, this is the Triple E buffing compound, and I'll always use that between applications of the Waterlux. I really prefer this method. It flattens the finish, 
it takes any lumps and bumps out of it and it really preps it well for the next coat of finish that goes on. So once the buffing is done, just like we did before the first coat, I'll clean it off with denatured alcohol and then we'll be able to get our second coat of finish on. This is the second coat of Waterlux Medium Sheen. Well, there it is with its second coat. Looks pretty good. I don't know if it's going to need a third or not. But if it does, I will do it the same way. Nice chatoyance there. Very hard to show the resin in the very bottom of this just because of the shape of it. It's a pretty bowl, that's for sure. Like that big crack that's been filled in too. All right, we'll see you when we're doing the bottom. So after two coats, I figured that the bowl was good. So here I'm using the vacuum chuck. I think it took me about three attempts to get it to run true before I could whittle down the little tenon that I glued on. So I used the bowl gouge to do that. And then once we get down to the resin area, I switch over to the Hercules to finish it off. Another note about tenons, uh, when you're using this method, make sure you use hardwood and not softwood. If you use softwood, it just doesn't have the structural strength of hardwood. That was actually a hard maple block that I glued on the bottom of this, and I really do recommend using that. Uh, you just can't trust softwood like you can hardwood. And it would be a shame to be almost done and then have it come flying off the lathe. All right, that's it for the video. Let's finish this up. Have a little chat about this beautiful project. Well, all right, that's it for the video. Let's have a last little look at this beauty bowl. This piece ended up being nine and a half inches across and four and three quarter inches tall. And it is just packed full of character. That's for sure. I will put rotating footage up at the end like I usually do, but this area here is pretty nice. Of course, you know, it's very hard to film the inside of this, get the light to hit that the right way so we can get a look at that color. Here is the very bottom, and I kind of like this concept where it shows the two colors that I use to create the color that's in the piece. So that's, that's kind of neat. I, maybe we'll incorporate more of that in the future. Anyway, it is a beautiful bowl, and hopefully Jenny and her father like it as much as I do. All right, let's set this down. All right, don't forget to put designer epoxy in the comments down below. Two words, not one word. A lot of people are combining them. Two words, designer epoxy. That's it. No hashtags, no periods. I, I just don't know if the comment picker will pick it up if you add all of that stuff. Uh, so that will be at 100,000 subscribers. Wow, it's still hard to believe, assuming that we get there. And of course, I'll be doing another draw at 95,000 subs. By the time this airs, we'll probably be over 92. So um, it's it's going right along. So that's, that's perfect. Thank you so much for subscribing. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please do that so that Help me get to 100,000. I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, so the box will be either Tuesday or Wednesday, somewhere around there. I'm not 100% sure, still working on it. Uh, but hopefully it um, looks really nice as much as this is. I'm sure it will. All right, well, that's it. Thanks for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. And of course, that thumbs up will help with the analytics. So if you can give me a thumbs up, they'll help push my content to others. So I would really appreciate that. And of course, leave a comment down below to be entered into my bowl draws. So please do that. All right, that's it. I'm done talking. How do you like my tan? Definitely need it seven days away. Uh, kind of ironic that it was so hot here when we were down there. And then we get back and it snowed last night. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, it's just the way it is. Welcome to Canada. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. Take care. Stay safe. Don't forget the bell. And we'll see you Tuesday or Wednesday. See you then.